Gandalf should have soy pointed in Lord of the Rings? Well, they, I think that it's rather they should have soy pointed when Gandalf returned. I still sort of feel like um, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure there's actually like a um, a, a J.R.R. Tolkien-esque reason why Gandalf had to die in uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. But it kind of seems like little bro was just, he took it as kind of like his opportunity to get out of the Fellowship. Like he couldn't have just run away from the Balrog like everybody else was doing. Bro needed some PTO. <laughs> needed some rest and relaxation. You're downplaying the Balrog? It seemed like everybody, even the, the hobbits are like, you know, three foot two and they were, they were getting away from the Balrog. The lore says the Balrog is somehow his cousin. It's so crazy that that's definitely uh, true. I mean, we're definitely right. They only got away because Gandalf took aggro. It's, it, it just, maybe I don't understand the dark arts or whatever. But like, can he just whip up like a, an alacrity spell and get them, you know, moving too sweet or something like that? Why didn't they just take the eagles? I told you, we can't afford the eagles. We can't, we can't replace an eagle with an eagle. What we can do is replace them in aggregate. We're going to replace the eagles with four halflings. Why halflings, Billy? Tell them, why halflings? Because they, they get to Mordor. Samwise had the highest on Mordor percent last season. That's true. His, his slugging percentage is not that impressive because he literally uh, has never hit a home run in his life except for when he miraculously killed Shelob. <clears throat> but the dude is like Ichiro Suzuki. Like, there's like a 70% chance he gets on base. And by base, I mean Mordor. Uh, every time that he steps up to the plate. Steamboat Willie ass. I fucking hate all this Steamboat Willie discourse, man. Take it from a Disney head. All right, nine wins, I'll take it. <laughs> Steamboat Willie sucks ass, bro. I guess it's, it's a landmark for the precedent that it's finally entered the public domain, but it's pure shit. It's like 17 seconds long just to do, And I'm also losing it at all the people that are like, they think because it's entered the public domain, they're like, I can finally make Steamboat Willie memes. And I'm like, bro, you've been putting fucking cerebral, bit crushed, AI generated SpongeBob drill rap on my timeline for like literally 15 years. Like, don't worry about it, bro. Disney was not worried about your two out of 10, six IQ, steamboat willy but he's holding like a bloody knife thing they got other stuff to worry about like you know going to war with ron desantis okay yes i did see the the spongebob drill rap i don't get it though but that's how I know it was good, because I don't understand the references to um, the show, but I was still like, this song is kind of fire. Like when Squidward came out and said, I'm a stone cold killer like my motherfucking house is. I don't even know, people are like, that's a bar and a half. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but can you explain it to me? What does Squidward's house look like? It's, it looks like an Easter Island. Oh, I'm a stone faced killer. Like my motherfucking house is. He looks like an Easter Island, or his, head, his house looks like an Easter Island statue. Oh, that is bars. He stole my whole fucking flow. Bar for bar, line for line. I mean, I've seen a little SpongeBob, but you have to acknowledge, DL Guiga, back me up here. Well, I don't know. You're kind of still a young head. You're like not even 30 yet. Okay, Jay, back me up here. When I was a kid, there weren't like, you just watch TV shows. There was no like, the, the most you would get is you would talk about it at the water cooler the next day. Sometime in the last like 15 years, 
it became like a way of life. You know, you watch the TV show, you talk about the TV show, you make memes about the TV show. The TV show has a legacy. There's a think piece about where it fits in. Nickelodeon cartoons ranked one through 10. You put SpongeBob at number two. Are you kidding me? Uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Sure, it was one of the first adult-oriented cartoons that's also enjoyable for general audiences, but the legacy of SpongeBob can't be crapped on like this. Like, nowadays, it's more of like, like, there was fandom when I was a kid, but it was mostly derided. It was mostly like, mm, at, in episode 17 of Itchy and Scratchy, Itchy scratches the same rib of Scratchy with a xylophone mallet, yet it produces two different notes. Can you please explain this blunt? That was what it was like. Nowadays, it's like normal people who have like normal existences um, are like, I'm obsessed with SpongeBob SquarePants, which is totally fine. This is something I need, legally need to say so that I don't get cyber bullies. <laughs> so like what I'm saying is like I may um, have seen some Spongebob, but I don't necessarily like um, remember that Squidward lived in a house shaped like a Moai head because I probably saw two episodes in 2003 and then went, that was okay. Did you know that I saw this on Twitter, so fact check me, please. Is it true that Vicks, uh, not vapor rub, but the one you used to put in your nose and then squirt it up to like work as a decongestant? Is it true that that shit used to have uh, essentially an analog to actual methamphetamine in it? Like it wasn't real meth, but it was like not just chemically similar, obviously, to real meth because that happens all the time, but also like the effects of it were almost the same. And then I was reading about it and they said like that shit only got canceled in, like uh, they had to change the ingredient in like 2004 or something like that. I was taking that shit when I was in like grade nine. <laughs> I wasn't, it wasn't habit forming. Like I wasn't, I was only using it when I was sick, but at the same time I was getting fucking zooted and sitting down and playing Halo Combat Evolved. No wonder you got no sense of smell. She's right. I think about that. Because you know, like, as a kid, you, you anchor on... I don't know why I'm so philosophical today. You anchor on the period of time in which you're presently living as being like the best things have ever been. Which may or may not be true, okay? But you extend that sometimes to the idea that like... There's no, no other progress we can make. Like, I remember when gay marriage got legalized in Canada in like 2004 or something like that. Me and my friends in high school would be like, we sorted out the last social issue. I can't even imagine what it would fucking be in 2023 that people are going to be upset about. It's probably going to be like people marrying robots or something like that. No, it turns out it's the same shit it's always been as people hating other people. <laughs> But as a kid, you know, you're, I'm in ninth grade, like, bro, can you believe people used to drink water out of lead pipes? Meanwhile, I'm like, hang on a second, I'm a little congested. <laughs> I'm gonna clean the whole classroom, I'm gonna clean the whole classroom. It's fucking crazy, man. We're probably doing the same thing now, right? I can't believe they were giving ninth graders meth when they had a runny nose. Meanwhile, we're fucking... Well, I don't know, like microwaving saran wrap just because it says microwave safe on it. You got like plastic vapor all up in your fried rice. The one that gets me is like, and I, I didn't, well, I guess I did have some like this, but for like five years, we were all in the mid 2000s, the early 2010s, we were all using scrubbing body washes and like facial cleansers that literally just had like plastic grains of sand in the fucking soap. And it felt good as fuck. You'd be like, oh, I have like, I'm 16 years old. I'm like, oh, I have a few pimples. You know what would be great? Rubbing sand on my forehead. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, it, when it hurts, you can tell that it's, it's cleansing. Then like, a, I don't know, maybe like eight years ago, I was like, whatever happened to those shampoos that had like the little plastic beads in them? You Google it and they're like, they stopped making it because it was plastic. This shit was leaching into the water and if you swallowed any of it, it lived in your body forever. You're like, oh, that makes sense. 
My bad. Can I also say, I was one of the first uh, Stanley Tumblr haters. I made that tweet. It was like the, the pink Stanley Tumblr with the plastic straw coming out of it. And I said, if you drink from one of these, I don't care about any of your opinions. I've come around. I've seen so much Stanley Tumblr hate that I am now pro Stanley Tumblr. Because I see the cringe in myself that I embodied before but didn't realize. It's just a cup, bro. I said there was that video of like the, the Target put out like the red Stanley cups and it was like Black Friday. Like people were going crazy over the cups. And people were like, $60 cups, that's crazy. That cup only has $47 worth of rare earth metals in it. Uh, okay, brother. Maybe it's true, but at the same time, it's just something to drink water out of. You pay eight bucks for Twitter. This shit is literally negative value. Like you're paying money to be made fun of. I'm <laughs> not going to be mad about somebody buying a $60 mug for their kid or something like that. It also is sick that that cup survived the car fire. I honestly don't care if it's real or staged or fake or whatever. That shit was very smart advertising at the worst. I respect that. Are we back to thinking it's real? I never thought it was fake. I'm not one of those, uh, the, uh, I'll admit, okay, the, the kangaroo video where the dude punches the kangaroo. But I've kind of come around to thinking that one is real after seeing the other kangaroo video where the kangaroo grabs the dude's dog in the river. And then it also is squared up like this. And then they start, they scuffle exactly the same way that like um, world star hip hop fight videos go. Like they just start by like kind of grabbing at each other's faces a little bit. And then the dude does and hits him with the splash. Anyway, so I'm starting to think that, that maybe that kangaroo video is real. But otherwise, I am a... You know the, the, when people post like a viral video on Reddit and the top comment is like, this is fake, and then the next comment is always like, nothing ever happens? I'm the opposite. I think everything is happening at all times. I could believe in my head that that car exploded, but the cup still had ice in it. I'm not going to run the thermodynamics. I just want to, it makes me feel better about the world to believe that that could happen because it's very funny. Did you see the tweet? This one, you can definitely find this one, librarian. Did you see the tweet that said, um, it said Obama, Obama talking to a girl with a septum piercing? Caroline Polachek definitely uh, took a shit in the mother toilet this year. That was, uh, I saw that this morning and I, I thought, great tweet. Great tweet. Oh, I saw it. It finally happened. Everyone shut up. He's not in the chords, bro. He's not in the chords. I don't understand why the Obama tweet is funny. Sorry, let me let me millennialize the joke. Now keep in mind you can't be mad at me because I'm a millennial, okay? Um, this is my impression of Barack Obama talking to a girl with a septum piercing at a party. Hey, have you heard the new Caroline Polachek album? It's goaded. That's not how Obama talks, though. Oh, sorry. Um, hey, uh, have you heard the new Carolyn Polachek album? Let me be clear, it's goaded. Do you think that if there were no term limits, JFK would still be president? Holy cow, what the hell? Vampire? Excuse me, we're not talking about Olivia Rodrigo. We're talking about Caroline Polachek. That's a Chibli line. <laughs> God, it's the nicest thing you could have said to me. I appreciate that. I think you need a brain to be president. Someone hasn't been watching the news 
<laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Not just the last few years, like a like a long, long, maybe the whole time. <laughs> Uh, I I knew that you knew that that was a setup, and I appreciate the setup that you gave me. Thank you so much. And now, uh, would you have voted for Adlai Stevenson or Dwight Eisenhower in the 1952 presidential election? Um, I don't think 32 votes enough. So listen, I think that um, the current climate means you should vote for you should have voted for Adlai Stevenson. That being said, I. I'm a conventional Andy, uh, even now. I basically form my opinion based on whatever I see uh, in social media. So I'm pretty sure that the astroturfing campaign for Eisenhower would have been fucking insane, bro. I think I would have been psyoped into voting for Dwight Eisenhower for sure. People would have been like, Adlai Stevenson is very pro-worker. And I would have been like, yeah, Dwight Eisenhower uh, won World War II, bro. Was Adlai Stevenson even enlisted? Oh, no, no, he was a lawyer uh, in America working on like human rights issues, AKA, what a puss. Give me Eisenhower. And then also, you ever see the photo of Eisenhower? Where he's sitting like this? A lot of presidents nowadays are afraid to sit like that. I mean, you would not catch Donald Trump doing a little jaunty sitting to the side, cross-legged, hands folded in his lap. Because now it's all about signaling. You got a man spread. You got to put your hands on your knees and like hunch forward and give like a little scowl, like a... It's the first I've heard of it. I've never heard of it before. We lost our way as a country. Presidents didn't used to be afraid to serve. And then if someone ever said, hey, Dwight Eisenhower, why are you sitting like that? He'd be like, hey, brother, why does your country not have a nuclear arsenal yet? We've already blown up 18 islands in the Pacific just testing the motherfuckers. And they'd say, you're right, I'm sorry, sir. We used to be a proper country. You're not American? Dio, we got, see? Finally, the truth comes out. I'm Canadian, which means I can pretend to be American when it serves the purpose of the joke. <laughs> Get melted, son. You're not American, you live in America? What the hell? I live on America, motherfucker. Who's Clint Eastwood? Go ahead. Go ahead. Get make my riz. Clint Eastwood, if he was born in... 2000 instead of 1871. I did see the tweet. Back in our day, we used to have to read The Great Gatsby, but these days, all the kids are wondering where The Great Gatsby. I thought that was... If you're going to do a pun, that's the way to do it. I gave that my, my own internal plus two. You, can't, you can minus two me if you want. I just retold it. I didn't make it up. Hey, Tomo, you, you going to make me do it from the other side? Can I say, I used to be, it's weird. I'm like less online than I've ever been by volume, but more online than I've ever been in terms of awareness. So back in, I don't know, whenever this meme came out with the Beyond Chicken Nuggets, I probably didn't find out about it for like, I don't know, eight months, 12 months, something like that. Hang on, we gotta start with the virgin suicides here. How funny is it that when I finally figured out where the meme was from, it's the two dudes holding the Beyond Chicken Nuggets from KFC. I thought it was just two dudes pointing at something, making funny faces. I didn't realize they were holding the Beyond Chicken Nuggets from KFC. It's not that funny. I eat meat substitutes fairly regularly. It's pretty funny. <laughs> what are we doing here? Guest 19355446341. What are we doing here? Can I ask something with, with no judgment whatsoever? Remember when Chris Evans' uh, phone got hacked? And he had that image in his photo reel that was him naked, um, but over his penis was text that said, protect that pussy. 
it didn't get hacked, he accidentally posted it. Well, listen, either way, <laughs> did we all just kind of give it its day in the sun as a funny thing and then agree to move on? Well, that's my bad on that one. We'll, we'll rematch on that one. That's my bad. Yeah, because he owned it. I mean, it's not, I, I would have liked to have just heard him explain what the purpose of the image is. It was a warning. Well, I just like, I'd like to know if he saw like it was a meme of himself and he saved it because it was funny or if he himself photoshopped the image. I'm not saying it's like indefensible. I'm just, I'm curious, I guess. Why? Well, because he had the picture of himself that said guard that pussy on it, which is just like, I think it's, I'm interested in people. I would love to know what was the impetus for him having that image. Like, I've got a thousand images of, like, basketball player quotes on my phone. If someone said, what are these for? I'd be like, I use them to reply on Twitter all the time. I've been... Why did we stop a run here? I don't remember. I've been getting my ass beat, though. Win streak minus two. You know how embarrassing that is? When my goat is washed, I'm feeling like Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special. Oh, why don't you watch it before you say that shit? I did watch it. I watched the whole thing, bro. Why? Because... I'm a millennial, so it's hard for me. I mean, like if Michael Jordan came back to play like a one game in the NBA every nine months, you're telling me you wouldn't watch that shit? You're like, come on, I know he's washed, but maybe he's not. Maybe he's over it. And then, you know, like 20 minutes in, you're like, nah, he ain't coming back, bro. A few chuckles, but not worth the hour. I mean, I, I have respect for Dave Chappelle as um, a very... A, a dedicated stand-up comedian who obviously has commitment to his craft. Uh, but I think that, especially as time has gone on, he's become so self-indulgent as, like, the comedians are the modern-day philosophers, sort of, like, insanity. Um, like, we're supposed to be, like, truth-tellers that make society face uncomfortable facts about itself. And I'm like, brother, I don't know if you got the sauce for that. <laughs> I think... Because <laughs> you just keep telling the same thing that you feel is your truth over and over. And I think even the people who, who like Dave Chappelle are like, we get it, man. Like, we, we got it. You got an axe to grind with the trans community. But, like, at some point, surely even the people who, like, agree with you are like, can we move on to something else? I hope, I hope it's like that, at least. It's, it sucks too, because he's like an incredible storyteller. Like he's mastered the art of, of building a story and then yanking the rug and then rebuilding it with like a, a, a message at the end of it. But it's just the, the actual content of the story is not there anymore. It's just gone. See, given what we've talked about already, someone in chat has asked multiple times, do you know the movie Wolf from 1994? Please tell me you're not the director of Wolf, okay? Because we just went over this. You shouldn't be going into people's chats, picking fights with them just based on their opinion of the movie, okay? Maybe they loved it, maybe they hated it, maybe they don't get it. But you, you made the piece of art and now the art, it partly belongs to you and it partly belongs to society, okay? You can't be its steward for the rest of your life. You make it, you put it out into the world, and then you see what happens. Anyway, I've never, I've never seen it, I think. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. I did see that Christopher Nolan's uh, favorite Peloton instructor did roast one of his movies. They said, and I quote, that's two hours of my life, I won't get back. Um, I was on my Peloton doing a, a high interval of some shit. <laughs> I'm dying, and the instructor said, started talking about one of my films and said, has anyone else seen this? Because that's a couple of hours of my life, I'll never get back again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, like, <laughs> when Rex Reed takes a shit on your film, he doesn't ask you to work out <laughs> So It's a very funny news story. Um, and that's, what, that's really all there is to it. I don't, I don't have like a whole wealth of content to glean from that. All, I say this as someone who's in an industry that's sort of like tangential to um, 
a Peloton instructor. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like a tangential to a film director. It's kind of a different sort of thing. But it's, it's not that dissimilar to a Peloton instructor. So I have to, if anyone's getting on the Peloton instructor's case, I just have to say that they have the right to, uh, to their opinions on media, you know? They should be able to, you know, you're on the bike for 30 minutes. They can't just say, oh, cadence 80, resistance, uh, you know, 35 to 40. They got to they gotta talk about little, uh, you know, little banter holes now and then. I do the same. Like, I'd be uh, uh, annoyed if, like, a director watched my content and I talked about their movie and said I didn't like it. And then he, like, the director got on me on Twitter and was like, what do you mean you don't like it? It's like, bro, I'm literally just talking right now. I should have diplomatic immunity. I'm not a film critic. I'm just a guy. What, people aren't allowed to, like, not like your movies? I think it's yap immunity. If you're a movie critic, or well, the other, you shouldn't be responding to movie critics and being like, no, actually, you're wrong. The movie's good. But, like, at least that's kind of like, the, but they're the opposing forces in the arena. I'm literally just a dude in the stands, and I'm like, I'm rooting for the lads in the blue shirts. What if a Peloton instructor said he didn't like your Isaac episodes? It, I, I know you're gonna hit me with a, a sure on this one. It would roll off of me like water off of a duck's back. It's part of the, part of the business. Now, if he came into chat and said, um, hey, I don't like your Isaac episodes, I would, I would ban him because that's just spreading hate for no reason. And as somebody that's in the industry, they should know better than to go to someone else's stadium and go, uh, hey, I don't like this. It's the same way, like, I would never go to a studio ride for Peloton and be like, you know, hey, uh, Christine, I don't like your rides. You know, that's her home turf. Did you see Jen Sherman dissing Chris Nolan? Wait a minute. Are you, th this is an extra wrinkle because we did talk about it. Are you telling me that Christopher Nolan's favorite Peloton instructor is Jen Sherman. What the fuck was going on in that movie? Do you understand? Seriously, you need to be a neuroscientist to understand. And that's two and a half hours of my life that I want back. I want it back. That in and of itself is like, I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm just yapping. But that calls into question. You know what it is? He's really good at making movies. He doesn't have the best choice in Peloton instructors. He's very smart in one domain and a normie in all the other ones. That's completely fair. I knew there were Jen Sherman fans out there, but uh, I, I wouldn't have expected necessarily Chris Nolan to be one of them. The Shermanator. She does, if you called her the Shermanator, she would cancel the ride. She would stop pedaling and call your ass out. Listen, we all know, you get to the gate, you spot somebody, you're like, this person's going to be the most annoying person on the flight. We all know, 98% of the people on the flight zero in on that person immediately. You're like, this is the squeaky wheel. I'm going to stay away. Me looking at a baby. Me looking at the dude with enormous over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones and a Neon Genesis Evangelion shirt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Two can play that game as long as we're going to get into personal attacks. But... Apart from the one person or like the one family who's causing all the problems, everybody is annoying everybody else. The people who are annoying you are also being annoyed by you. And I know you're like, no, no, no. I'm like self-aware and I stay out of people's way. I like to think that too, but I think it's a little naive, you know? Like when I'm in a hurry and I'm walking and someone doesn't shoulder check and they kind of bump into me while I'm moving by, in my head, I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. And then they're like, oh, sorry. And I'm like, yeah, you better be sorry. Sorry, like, you exist and got in my way. But then whenever I'm walking uh, leisurely and someone's, like, rushing by me and they bump into me, I'm like, oh, sorry. But then I'm like, what's the hurry, Turbo? We're, all, we're both going to the same gate. Like, what do you... Ru rush there as fast as possible, like, just to get in line? What do we do? Like, no matter what, I'm always the good guy. <laughs> At least in the moment. Later, I'm like, okay, maybe that's my fault. That's healthy though? No, I know, but that's why I'm saying, instead of being like, everybody on this flight is annoying and it's the airline's fault, you should just recognize that anytime you come in contact with a large group of other people, especially with strangers, you know, you, you don't have like the, the, the rapport with them that you have with your friends where you cut them a little bit of slack. Instead, we don't want to fight the boss right away. You would you assume the worst in them. It would always, in almost every situation, it would behoove most of us to just chill out a little bit. 
easier said than done, but people do, I mean, they sometimes lose their entire sense of what? Explosivo. <laughs> it's the name of uh, the song, Explosivo. Don't know what it's about, but it's good to go. I remember I was on a flight one time and an old man pulled out his electric razor in the, his seat and started shaving, which is just, to me, is insanity. Like, even if it's got one of those hair catchers, man, the hair is getting fucking everywhere. Like, that's psychotic. Or, like, clipping your toenails while you're on the flight. That's crazy, too. What about the guy who cooks in the airplane bathroom? No, I, I'm, I say this without a hint of irony. The dude who's doing the cooking in the airplane bathroom on TikTok, he shouldn't go to prison, but he should be banned from flying on any airline, uh, any airline for the rest of his life. Like, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, I'm like, bro, I gotta, I gotta piss. <laughs> like, I could, could you just do your TikTok content someplace else? Like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta do in the bathroom, like, what I'm designed to do in the bathroom. Or what the bathroom's designed for me to do in the bathroom. Put him in the luggage hold? I mean, that shit is just crazy. Now, the one of the, the video of the dude smoking a bowl and chugging a beer and then releasing the smoke from the bowl and then the it the zooms out and reveals that he's in one of those like ikea uh prefab rooms inside of the store that's cool as hell he probably should be banned from ikea by the corporation but like the, he's not in my opinion at least he's not harming anybody societally speaking check it out dab and granny i'm gonna try and do this fucking grab Damn it, Granny style. People will be like, oh, like I have my kid here. Like your kid is 15 years old. They're seeing worse than that. And they're going to be like in undergrad in two years anyway. Like I wouldn't worry about it too much. He should cook in the Ikea kitchen. Yeah. Now, see? And people give King Solomon a bad name. I like... I talked about it a lot before, but it, it genuinely pisses me off. Those videos of like... Someone in their seat will take a video and be like, the people beside me are having sex right now, or the people in the row behind me are having sex. That shit pisses me off. People always assume it's like, oh, you're jealous? I'm like, no, I'm not jealous. It's just fucking weird ass behavior. You've made me part of your sex, and I'm just like going to work right now, <laughs> or like I'm going to see like my family. Like, just, I, I'm not even going to say you have to do it when you get home. Like, I'm not saying, like, hide that behind closed doors. But, like, don't make me a part of it, man. And also, if you're going to be stealthy when you do it, be so stealthy that I don't know clearly that you're doing it. Because it's, like, one of the most annoying feelings, and it's something I got to search within myself to figure out why it bothers me so much, is when someone thinks they're getting away with something by being sneaky, and they're like obviously not sneaky at all. The reason that people aren't busting them is mostly because they're just embarrassed rather than like, you know, oh, we don't see what's happening. Like everybody sees what's happening. They just don't want to be the person that has to come up to like two middle aged weirdos and be like, can you not have sex in row J or whatever? It's like when if you're like 17 and you're drinking alcohol at the movie theater. Nobody's busting you. It's not because, like, you're sneaky. Because you're not sneaky. The bottles are clanging around. You're, like, laughing inappropriately. And then your friend is going, shh. shh, shh. It's just because nobody cares, man. So just, like, enjoy yourself. Most of the adults in the theater are drunk, too. They're just, you know, <laughs> they're holding their shit together. <laughs> 
I don't know if like the, the people that are into that, if part of it for them is that they're like, you know, like, oh, other people are going to be offended by this. Like, this is taboo. It's like, it's not really taboo. Anyone could just whip it out and start going to town whenever. Like, you know what it is? I sort of, when I see, and I've never seen it in real life, but when I see two adults who are clearly like intoxicated in a viral video entering the Mile High Club thinking nobody can see them, that's the same way I think I would feel if a dude just whipped out his penis and started masturbating in public. Like for some reason, for a subset of the population, like one of them is like, ooh, that's like sneaky and like a little cool. And the other one is like, put this freak on the sex offenders registry. And I'm like, nah, man, put all three of them on the sex offenders registry. <laughs> they're, they're, all three of them are fucking weirdos, bro. Get them all out of here. And take the people off the registry who were just urinating in public. That's not the spirit of the law. It doesn't make sense. What's uh, what's stream of conscience? What are you just like, just like stream of talk? consciousness? Yeah, you, get, you just say things. It's a psychological exercise. All right, just off the top of the dome piece. Here we go. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No barking from the dog. No smog. Mama cooked the breakfast with no hog. I got my grub on, but didn't pig out. Finally got a call from a girl I wanna dig out. Looked it up for later. As I hit the dope, thinking where I live, another 24. I gotta go, cause I got me a drop top. If I hit the switch, I could make the ass drop. Had to stop at a red light, looking in the mirror, not a jack in sight. And everything was alright. I got a beat from Kim, and she could do it all night. We're just gonna keep going here, huh? Did you? Was that? I was I, very was impressed that, by you up, or? Like, yeah, did you just freestyle on that? And that was an original off the top of the dome. No, no, yep.